Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the VHV Collective, thanks for joining the lecture Back to the East by curator and our long-term colleague Zdenka Badovinac. Zdenka is a curator and writer uh, who served from 1993 to 2020 as director of the Moderna Galleria in Ljubljana, which since uh, 2011 has spent two locations the Museum of Modern Art and the Museum of Contemporary Art Metelkova. Her curatorial work is especially valuable because it has been initiating and participating in the complex process of institution building, exhibition making and critical writing that continue to create a synergetic and quite unique impact on a creation of a new type of museum institution and our understanding of art's role in defining contemporaneity. It is really a great pleasure to host uh, a conversation with Zdenka, one of our colleagues and comrades whom we admire the most and with whom we collaborated on numerous occasions, but also with whom we keep um, an ongoing and inspiring dialogue. Zdenka has been an important voice reflecting on social, cultural, and political urgencies of our time. And we are honored that we have a chance to extend this dialogue with you this evening. Before uh, we give floor to Zdenka, and before I just say a little bit about the circumstances of this conversation, I also want to continue on a personal note that Anna already mentioned, so that also for us, when we started working, uh, Moderna Galeria under leadership of Zdenka was always not only a place of learning, a place of connecting with colleagues, uh, a place of knowing about art that mattered for us, but also really a, a place for inspiration. And it was also also really precious for us in our many years of work to always really have this continuous uh, dialogue. And this is why it was also important that everything we kind of wanted to hear about the social and political and artistic circumstances in Ljubljana and in Slovenia now, that somehow we just don't not only ask it on the phone or on a private Zoom, but it was really something we wanted to share uh, and give a chance also for our colleagues to, to ask questions and on also Zdenka to kind of share uh, some of her thoughts about the current situation. And the current situation in Slovenia, unfortunately, is really difficult. So as I think many of you know, that uh, as it happened, unfortunately, in quite a few e uh, European uh, uh, countries and also around the world, the pandemic also overlapped with intensity of a political shift uh, towards the right. And the right-wing government in Slovenia right now uh, was also, uh, I would say, kind of quite intensively involved both in the institutional scene uh, and the out of institutional scene in terms of making quite harsh and, and, and radical changes. Within that also, uh, Zdenka did not get confirmed with her mandate as a director of Ljubljana's Moderna Galeria and Museum of Contemporary Art. And they have, uh, this is unfortunately only one of quite many moves, both in the landscape of institutions, but as I mentioned, and maybe some of you know, there are also really uh, worrying moves also in the, in the space of media, for example, and journalism and freedom of 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 uh, of criticism of all kinds and it's also touching quite drastically the out of institutional scene i'm certain that many of you have been happen uh, have been following the 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 very uh, horrible uh, eviction of the autonomous factory rog uh, problems around metalkova so in a way we asked zdenka uh, partly to also talk about this situation, but also, of course, to put this in the context of her work, both on the local and kind of uh, a global level. And uh, as you know, as, as you've seen in the in the announcement, her uh, her lecture is called uh, uh, "Back to the East" with a question mark, and we are very curious uh, to hear uh, how is your view uh, around this question mark and the format. How we imagined it is that. 
uh, Zdenka will give um, a short lecture and then we will also reserve quite a lot of space for your questions. As you know, in this webinar uh, uh, format that we have on Zoom this time, you can type in your questions and Anna and I will uh, read them and, and moderate them. So once again, um, Zdenka Dobrodošla, we are very glad to have you and uh, the floor is yours. Just a little technical remark that somewhere in the our intro, we lost your screen. So if you, uh, for showing the images, you should just uh, at some point when you want, uh, share it again. So thank you for joining us. Okay, bravo. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anna and Sabina. It's a great pleasure um, to be with you, uh, uh, again. Uh, it's a pity that it can be uh, in Zagreb. Um, in a um, normal situation, but here we are, and I just hope that technically this will work. So I will, of course, uh, try to um, uh, share screen uh, immediately that I can, uh, okay, so you see the first image. Okay. Yes, it works so fine. In my presentation, as you both uh, mentioned, I will try to, of course, to talk about my work, but uh, it's impossible not to mention the situation that uh, we are uh, at the moment. So I will try to explain some of um, my ideas and views um, uh, that I've been dealing uh, with through all these years uh, in Moderna Galleria. On the case of my last exhibition, uh, Bigger Than Myself, Heroic Voices from Ex Yugoslavia, which is uh, which will be open soon uh, as epidemic conditions, um, um, soon as the epidemic conditions allow uh, in Maxi in Rome. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the exhibition is almost installed. Uh, um, that, um, I was a curator from Maxi's site um, uh, that organized everything. So Julia um, and me, we were installing the, this exhibition, at least uh, from my site uh, via Zoom and WhatsApp. <laughs> so Julia also sent me some images. Um, uh, the exhibition, as I said, is almost installed uh, that I can can uh, share uh, with you. So for this exhibition, I conceived the concept um, that actually describes um, two forces that are bigger, as the title Bigger Than Myself says. So the two forces um, that are bigger than us individuals. One is an idea, a value for which one be, would be willing to die. And it refers to heroism, to the question, what are relevant uh, heroic gestures today? And other is about uh, the global capital, a total power that dominates everything today. So here uh, on the first image, you can see um, three works that are very telling uh, regarding um, those uh, forces. So on my left, on your left, uh, as well, you see a row of uh, paintings. Unfortunately, you can't see um, the faces, the portraits. So there are more than 90 portraits of the Bosnian and Herzegovinian um, heroes and um, a few heroines uh, depicted by the um, Bosnian Herzegovinian artists just after the Second World War, mostly in the 50s, and the group Irwin uh, framed them in their heavy frames, so appropriated them for, uh, for uh, this installation. Um, so the idea was to include those uh, paintings to the permanent collection of the Museum of the Revolution in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but they were um, never really included. They were deposited in the museum stores and uh, forgotten somehow. And then Irwin, of course, uh, found them and uh, framed them. And um, now we have them uh, at the exhibition here. So this is this um, big um, um, idea that one would 
uh, die for depicted in these uh, portraits. And on the floor, there is, uh, you, you see this black uh, something. Uh, it's, a, it's a sculpture by young Slovene artist Andrei Škufca. Um, it, it is like a amorphous mass, and it, it, it Skufza tries to visualize uh, this overwhelming force or uh, power of the capital. And then behind, there is a curtain by Sinisha Ilic uh, with uh, and Bojan Georgiev titled uh, Orientation in the um, Hundred Revolution. Uh, so in this work, we try to map um, hundred revolutions from the last hundred years, which is of course impossible. And you can see the abstract, actually the abstract image here. So it was uh, these two forces um, um, from the title um, that in a way also marked uh, my direct directorship in Moderna Galleria that, um, as you've heard, ended at the end of uh, uh, the last year. If I were to describe it, so my work at Moderna Galleria and my professional uh, work in general, general, so if I were to describe it in one single word, that would be a word uh, comradeship. Comradeship is about common interests and goals, friendship and ethics that transcend division in status, expertise, class, race, ethnicity, and gender. Comrades are united intellectually and emotionally. They share active position, the desire to change the things on the collective level. Genuine comradeship means a society of solidarity and participation that we lost. I grew up and was formed in socialist Yugoslavia, so my understanding of comradeship has been shaped by that context, of course, by my affirmative attitude to its emancipatory impulses, as by the critique of stratified socialist society, red bourgeoisie and bureaucratization. Since my teenage years, I have been a member of various formal and informal communities marked by comradeship. Those different comradeship through, let's say more than 40 years to today have been opposing the dominant model of life, established culture, uh, commercialization, Balkan war, nationalism, refugee crisis, historical revisionism, authoritarianism today, and loss of society. And exactly this loss of society, which is a broader problem today, and it doesn't relate only our region at all, is in the core of the bigger than myself uh, exhibition. So the exhibition message is that each small gesture that contributes to building of society, of solidarity, is a heroic gesture. And these heroic gestures are, of course, stimulated on this or other way by two mentioned forces that are bigger and that are uh, than us individuals. First is uh, an idealistic force that inspires us and relates to love and vision of something different. And second, a pragmatic force that controls and dominates us that we need to fight against it. So both, both forces are presented in this logo, hope you see it, of the exhibition, Bigger Than Myself, designed by George Balmazovic. This logo represents the unembraced couple Bosnian Serb, Bosko Berkic and Bosnian Bosniak Admira Iznic, who were shot dead by sniper fire on the Vrbanja Bridge in Sarajevo on 19 
uh, May 1993. According to witness reports, Bosco died on the spot while Admira was wounded and crowded to him to die next to him in his arms, so to speak. This logo marks the boundary between the past and the present, between the time of the socialist Yugoslavia, when we still believed in idea that was bigger than us, and the time when also the space of former Yugoslavia came under the power of a force bigger than any idea, the force of a global capitalism. Within socialist world, Yugoslavia was always crucially different, you know it. So it was after, you know, the split with Stalin in 19, 48, uh, soon after it, uh, the um, unique model of socialism self-management system was established. And then Yugoslavia was one of the initiators of the non-aligned movement. So the country uh, thus presented itself to the world with the symbols, as, uh, symbols of peace, liberty, equality, and brotherhood between nations and its non-aligned positions. So I can't remember that uh, any of our countries today have um, has any of these kinds of, uh, you know, symbols besides the, um, uh, you know, um, the coat of arms or whatever, the national um, um, insignia um, that we can present our ideas to the world. But, okay, so, um, it was different uh, in the past. So from being merely empty phrases, these values uh, were constantly implemented with varying degrees of success, of course, in social reality. It is this effort to put into practice progressive values that transcendent partial interest that art from the territory of former Yugoslavia treats as an important message from the past. Important not only for us, but for all humankind. A message from a time when we still believed that we could be better people, that we could go beyond ourselves and live in harmony with other nations, when we had faith in people's capacity for solidarity with others and in the existence of society. So by the time Bosco and Admira perished in a war started by Serbian aggressors, that faith in ideas more or, or less successfully embodied in the just dissolved Yugoslavia had long died. After the young couple's death, which symbolizes also the death of society, the present started, a time of cynicism and relativism, the time of individuals believing they can live without others had come. It seems that after the death of Admira and Bosco, we would all became the same members of global capitalist community. The old division between East and West became obsolete. Now we have only as many steps, say today, former West and former East. However, the fact that we did not completely get rid of our the fact that we don't uh, that we did not completely get rid of our uh, Eastern Europeanness began to become clear in 2008 with the financial financial crisis. But uh, what is this Eastern Europeanness that we cannot get rid of? 
In one of the recent CIMAM, and CIMAM for those who, who don't know, is International Committee for Museums and Collections of Modern Art. So in its uh, recent letters, its authors defined the situation in Eastern Europe, in Eastern European cultural institutions as marked with the old habits of political interfering. My own experience of working in the central state institution has been about the constant fights with authorities of different political orientations. Actually, none of these political policies have succeeded in building a modern cultural system based on the professional criteria and the relative uh, autonomy of cultural institutions. The influence of the profession and expert work on the functioning of, the, of institutions and the position of the artist in Slovenia was drastically, drastically reduced uh, with the appearance of a new government led by the right-wing uh, Janša's uh, party. As this. Among other things, the Minister of Culture changed the rules for the operation of expert groups at the Ministry of Culture by increasing the number of members from the Ministry itself and assigning himself the role of final decision maker. He also began to amend the founding acts of cultural institutions in parts concerning the criteria for directors as so that they adopted their preferable candidates. Among other things, Simon letters letter says, I, and here I quote, in the past few years, the so-called illiberal political model applied by governments in countries like Poland and Hungary now expands throughout the region, deeply affecting cultural communities there. Politics in these countries has seemingly returned to the old habits of interfering with both, recruiting policies and contact management of the state-founded um, institutions, end of quote. So how to understand this return to the old Eastern European habits? In Slovenia, this seems uh, like um, a shock we weren't prepared for, but did the old habits return really happen at all at once? and because uh, of one autocrat as Jansha is. Just after the collapse of socialist regime in Eastern Europe, we witnessed the catching up revolution. Eastern European countries were imitating the Western values and institutions, way of living and working. All these processes, were defined as democratization, liberalization, globalization, and so forth. But liberalism in the 1990s was closely related to nationalism. A Bulgarian political scientist, Ivan Krastev, says that nationalists and liberals were allies in the overthrow of communism in 1918. I quote him here. Appealing to national sentiment was critically important as a way of mobilizing society against the communist regime. This alliance between nationalists and liberals came to an end during the Yugoslav wars. After the war, the liberals had to prove themselves with the success of economic reforms and not anymore with national symbols. 
by 2010, Central and Eastern European versions of liberalism had created great social inequality, pervasive corruption, and morally arbitrary redistribution of public property into the hands of a small number of people. The financial, financial crisis in 2008 greatly weakened the reputation of neoliberals and the belief that Western elites knew what they were doing. According to Krastev, this is why 2008 had a such shattering ideological, not merely economic effect. In public, such distrust of Western financial capitalism was presented as even greater than it really was. In order to cover up corruption and abuse of power at home. Today, Orban claims that the West is in a decline. Russia, Turkey, China finally began to wake up and became the example of uh, strong leaders who advocate a society of tra um, traditional values, nationalism, and uh, patriarchalism. Last year, almost at the same time as we got Corona, we got Janis Janša, a Slovene version of Hungarian leader. Janša is a perfect example of the nationalist liberal alliance from the end of the, end of the 80s um, that lasts to today. The epidemic then became an, ex an excellent opportunity for escalation of hate speech, stricter immigration policies, a new pressure on the media and cultural institutions and critical contemporary art, which has been strongly involved in actual anti-government protests. Critically minded intellectuals and artists are increasingly facing punishment. Populism and patriarchal values have been strengthened. All this was soon followed uh, by protests, mostly on bicycles, since this was the only way the protesters uh, could preserve the recommended social distance. The weekly demonstrations, which have now been going on for almost a year, are aimed against the current government, against corruption, police violence, militarization, capitalism, and of course the envir environmental uh, destruction. All sorts of people from every generation can be found among the protesters, but, but it's the representatives of anti-capitalist bloc, the anarchists and Antifa who give the demonstrations a particular, let's say, a particular tone. A kind of core group who also Make, um, made the visual identity of the protest is the workers and culture task group, act, active dialogue in dialogue with culture, whose members wish to remain uh, anonymous, of course, partly of uh, security reasons. These actions have their own visual identity and here okay. so these actions have their own um, visual identity uh, with a stenciled bicycle as their logo um, so here you can see how it is used uh, at the different uh, occasions so one of the nicest um, is a work of graffiti showing a 500 meter line of bicycles 
that ex extends along the walls next to the Gradashica river channel in Ljubljana. It is interesting that the bicycles in, in the graffiti along uh, this um, small river have no riders. <laughs> Here, the absence of the cyclist uh, individual bodies somehow help us to preser preserve a sense of belonging to a collective body. So I included um, the bicycles uh, from Gradashica to the exhibition Bigger Than Myself. So you can see here, of course, the working situation with the bicycles. Uh, signed by, by the group of anonymous artists and activists entitled um, 220 Bikes. As I said, the exhibition hasn't been open yet, but its installation is almost ready. Early this year, the Mladina magazine, you know, Mladina is the most uh, famous and critical magazine here in Slovenia, discovered a letter sent by the Slovene ambassador to Rome, to our foreign ministry, where he was appalled by the fact that a central national institution such as Moderna Galleria was preparing an exhibition with the artists from the common Yugoslav state. Although, of course, this was, and this is not the exhibition uh, um, um, of Moderna Galleria, it was just me uh, who was invited um, to do it. And Moderna Galleria is only supposed to host the exhibition um, at the end of this year in Ljubljana. Um, so it doesn't matter, he used um, the exhibition to communicate his nationalist, uh, nationalist views. A similar diction as him that distances uh, from the common Yugoslav space uh, with, with which Moderna Galleria is supposed to cooperate too much has already been heard by an expert group at the Ministry of Culture, the Ministry of Culture, and the Minister of course, and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. The common denominator of all the criticisms that have been aimed at Moderna Galleria and me in the recent months, especially by the governmental structures and the people close to them, is that the program of Moderna Galleria is simply too turned to the history. It means to the past. In this way, it is somehow too dusty. There is too much history, especially the history of um, uh, the country that doesn't exist anymore, geopolitics, sociology, and too little, it's interesting, there is too little contemporaneity and plurality of different artistic approaches. Here I have to emphasize how minister, the Ministry of Culture imagines contemporary. At the moment, as I see, at least three cultural models are present in Slovenia. One is traditional, focused on the national and the eternal truths about being and life. And other is neoliberal, who among other things swears by cultural industries and the contemporary forms and tools of art and everything which is related to new technologies. So the new technologies are extremely important in Slovenia, it's very specific. But the technology, so the, the, the part of the art scene that is in favor of this new technology, mostly uh, treats, um, treats them as um, politically neutral and without history. So being without history here means being contemporary. So these two models are not antagonistic. They often support each other. 
and the actual cultural minister knows perfectly how to navigate between these two models. So it's not by chance that the new director of Moderna Galleria is a new media artist. So the third, of course, informal model of culture and, and its institution, I define as situated and uh, with it, we could label Moderna Galleria until recently, of course, and some other venues like Mladinsko Gledališče, the youth theater or some NGOs. This situated model is neither limited to the local national space and its traditions, nor to the cultural industries, digital networks and their apparent neutrality. To be situated means to be positioned, to take a critical stand towards one's own past, present and future. Bigger than myself is precisely about this positioning. It speaks about local histories and the social political traditions, about their emancipatory potentials, and also about their deviations about global capitalism, the post human conditions, uh, condition and, uh, on our return to authoritarianism. The situatedness and positioning of exhibition are discussed in, uh, in the eight sections of the exhibition. Four sections are about the values that are positive values. Uh, wars to die for. Uh, they are freedom, equality, brotherhood and hope. More specifically, these values relate to different fights for freedom, solidarity between the working people, gender equality, faith in the future. The next, uh, the next set sessions are about values as risk, individualism, alienness and metamorphosis. These are not values worth dying for. We didn't choose them. They are consequences of the effects of force of capital. These are phenomenon of our contemporary life that fit conditions where we don't have society anymore, but only competitive individuals where we justify devastation of society and nature as necessary risk that is precondition for progress and profit. The refugee crisis and now pandemic claim more solidarity, acceptance of the others, less fear and more need to touch each other. More and more people are migrants today. Our native space is not anymore what defines our identity. Also, we are increasingly dependent on technology, which became our prophecies. We are more and more aware how interdependent we are with the non-human agencies. At the same time, we are still grounded in our local experiences that can help us to overcome con uh, constraints of our contemporary global society. Okay, so back to the East again. When we talk about the East, we usually have in mind the socialist East. And here we must point out its two sides. It's idealism, the idea for which we were prepared to die, and its deviation into an authoritarianism or even dictatorship. A return to the East today, unfortunately, means above all, the dark side of the bigger than myself, the authoritarianism. In the absence of the great ideas for which we would be willing to die today, it seems that nothing can really save us from the forces that want to dominate and control us. 
that this dark side of the bigger than myself has finally and totally won. The exhibition seeks a way out in the many critical thoughts and through raising awareness of the situation in which we find ourselves. It is true that the exhibition speaks primarily of this duality hidden in the title Bigger Than Myself, the duality between the ideal and the pragmatic. But at the same time, it overcomes this duality with bringing into it it's into its narrative, the third element. Here I should, here it should be emphasized that both aspects, aspects, idealistic and pragmatic ones are explicitly human. However, this is only in appearance as the third force, a non-human voice, voice of nature is present throughout the exhibition. We enter the exhibition, and here I'm sorry, I don't have the, the images because this part hasn't been installed yet. So we will enter the exhibition through a real small tree avenue of Nada Perlia, Macedonian artist. And then we will recognize the voice of the nature here. And we recognize it also in the works that are explicitly about individual human heroes and heroines, such as in the work uh, of, um, uh, sorry, it's, uh, uh, some more, uh, in the work of Marta Popivoda and Anna Vujanovic woman, bodyscape, uh, woman in, in battle and some other on the historical heroes. So the works that talks about um, partisan um, heroine Sonia Vujanovic. So you can see here the abstract landscape that um, appears uh, in their works and it's actually abstraction in a way, abstraction of the forest. And forest, in their work, uh, it, it is treated as a, as a comrade, comrade in arms. Um, so the forest, as you know, were, the, were where the partisan hid and planned life after liberation. So that's why the exhibition ends with a section of metamorphosis that gives space to non-human agency, that is animals and all other nature. Here we have, we can find also some other artists as uh, one of the most important representatives of uh, post-humanist art, Maya Smrekar, with her hybrid family, uh, the family that includes also animals, and then Marietica Potterch with a series of um, drawings that visualize and conceptualize the agency of rocks, microorganisms, and humans uh, on Earth, physical, inorganic matter, living organisms. Um, so, all these um, things um, um, that uh, somehow are woven together in the uh, uh, coexistence and mutual, mutual uh, dependence. And here you have, you can't see well, but this is uh, the work of uh, Gregor Mobius, uh, who somehow um, invented algorithm, how the first living creature, a molecular, uh, behaved and he treats uh, that first um, living being as a, as a hero as well. And then you have um, Marco Pogacnik, uh, the oldest, one of the oldest artists, uh, member of the famous group of Ho from the 60s and 70s. Uh, so in the Syria of his new drawings uh, on the, here on the blue, you can see, um, uh, he says that not just human beings um, can be uh, considered heroes. 
there are beings of nature like big trees or whatever that like heroes fight so that um, the threat of life upon the earth does not break under the pressure of the present rather aggressive uh, civilization. But from the point of view of our topic back to the East, there is perhaps an even more telling work by Jorge Barshi, with whom I would also like to conclude this presentation. The work refers to the long running controversy between the fate of the, about the fate of the Kremlin Stadium built in the 1930s by the most famous Slovene architect of all times, Jozef Plechnik. In private investor plans to rebuild Plechnik Stadium, the far greater amount of surface area is planned for the commercial activity compared to what is intended for sustainable communal use by citizens. Disputes over the stadium's uh, renovation have dragged on for more than 10 years, during which time the stadium has uh, overgrown with the grass, as you can see here in the image. Uh, the artist Joze Barshi, who sees a particular beauty in his overgrown condition, is proposing that the owners be allowed to build whatever they want around the stadium um, so long as they leave the interior of the stadium wild and overgrown. Barshi's art installation includes, so this is already from Rome, but not finished yet completely. So the installation includes the photographs from the actual situation in stadium, and then also documents from the stadium uh, history. One which is another photograph showing um, uh, the, oh, oh, let me see if I have, uh -huh, okay, I have. Uh, the photograph, so this photograph is also included that shows um, off taking of the Slovene Home Guard under the command of uh, General Leon Rupnik on Adolf Hitler's birthday in 1944. So not long after the war, Leon Rupnik, the general, was condemned to death and executed. In, 19, um, in 2019, um, more than um, seven, seven decades later, the Supreme Court of Slovenia announced the Rupnik verdict and sent the case back to the Ljubljana District Court. Rupnik's story is just another chapter that reveals the deep divide between the this, this incidents of the left and right in the countries of the former Yugoslavia. The divisions surrounding the renovation of Plechnik Stadium, meanwhile, reflect a not so different antagonism between those who advocate a society of the commons and those who support neoliberal interests. Barshi proposal turns the stadium into a, into a monument that reminds us that everything is transitory. Also his installation in Maxi, where we will sow grass just before opening. So there will be again some uh, uh, nature in the exhibition. But here we are not dealing with some romantic notion that leaves the resolution of human problems to nature. No, this is more about recognizing as illusion the idea that people have reality under their control. So in conclusion, let me say that Bigger Than Myself is an exhibition of two and one forces that characterize our work, idealistic and pragmatic human forces and a non-human force in 
view of which this heightened to rethink our comradeship and in general our society, which cannot be a society if it is not based on comradeship. So there is no society without solidarity or, or comradeship. Comradeship, no, there is no society. And this can only be um, a comradeship which also includes a non-human ag agency. Okay, so that's it. So um, I think that Anna and I will break the ice with some questions, but uh, we have really a lot of audience and thank you a lot for this great uh, turnout. And we also want to encourage you, you can either put your questions on the Facebook chat, you can put it in the chat here on Zoom, or you can just raise your hand and then we will also give you a chance to ask the question. So whichever uh, option is um, uh, you prefer all the all, all 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 the formats of asking questions are very welcome. I would maybe like to start uh, a little bit uh, asking Zdenka, can you also talk a bit about this tension between local and global? I mean, I'm also inscribing a little bit the perspective from Croatia here, where I feel that also uh, this kind of right-wing authoritarian voices and their uh, local dynamics quite changed in terms of what used to be a tension uh, with the global, where somehow we could still kind of treat them as some state of exception. And there was possibilities of maybe certain influences uh, and, you know, kind of positions where we would say, okay, this is unacceptable. And there are, you know, uh, almost like solidarities which worked as a loud voice. I have a feeling that a lot of it has been hijacked in different ways. So I'm also wondering in all of these contexts in Slovenia now, how this tension between kind of local and global works. And in a way, maybe I can also translate it in the question of, you know, like partisanship. So that is, you were talking very nicely about how I would say this comedy uh, be on, on certain section of Slovenian society worked, but how this also worked uh, on, the, on the global level. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, the relation between global and um, local, let's say, it's not um, uh, so present in the public discussions at the moment as um, the relation between local and, let's say, Slovenia and European Union, to put it very concretely. Uh, and I think this is the case in all uh, Central and Eastern Europea, uh, Europe, um, because, um, uh, you know, um, we somehow um, took for granted that we are the victims of this global capital and it works, doesn't matter what we do, so it's there. So we don't need to, 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 to debate it. But what is more um, important for our politicians and um, you know their interest is the discussion between um, uh, Europe and uh, the country and it is uh, in Hungary you know you have uh, or, or in Italy not only in Eastern Europe and I, I mean I forgot to mention maybe you know that everything what I, what I was saying was of course, back to the East and about uh, our um, broader region, but ex actually a lot of phenomena uh, we can um, 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 relate also to, to, the, to the West, you know, all the, uh, the new authoritarianism and, you know, uh, remember Trump and, uh, you know, also what they have now, uh, it's, uh, it's not an, um, a heaven. Uh, so the, um, I think that these, um, you, you know, uh, there are two dimensions uh, important to mention, um, to be mentioned in this discussion about the local and European or whatever. And this is one is um, um, very populist and it relates to the traditions, you know, we have to protect our uh, uh, nation, country, and there is nobody who would say us what to do, you know. So Yansha goes to Brussels and he, he has um, fights with, uh, you know, the people there discussing the media, the lack of freedom in Slovenia media and so on. So he would say, oh no, Brussels will know, we don't need a new Belgrade, you know, before we have the Belgrade, now we have 
Brussels, but at the same time, there is the pragmatic dimension, you know, so they, they are not completely against U European Union because um, there is money, of course, you know, and they are not against globalism because they can uh, relate to the um, um, global um, uh, corporations. Uh, you know, so that it's a it's a big big question uh, how how much uh, our countries are still really national. You know how much our economists are really national. So it's it, it's a kind of paradox also when we start talking about the national art, national culture back to the whatever you know um, as um, as it, it is the fact. You look at the um, you know, it's not only European Union or the West, but we have this new strong influence from China, you know, um, that rules uh, Balkans uh, today. And there, there will be, of course, after the economic, um, um, economic um, influences, um, of course, also the cultural and, uh, you know, the question is how all these national stories uh, will end. Thank you, Zdenka, for this uh, inspiring presentation and for sharing your uh, thoughts with us. This last part, uh, when you mentioned that there is no uh, society without comradeship, so much needed. And uh, I would uh, continue and also mention that there is no education and exhibition making without comradeship. And because this uh, conversation is part of our ongoing uh, evenings with Vehave Academia, our program that actually deals with this idea of learning by doing and engaged uh, processes of uh, pedagogical and collective situations. I would like to ask you about the role of education related to your curatorial practice. It was also quite important strand in your curatorial work so it would be great if you can elaborate on the process of the knowledge production inside and outside of the institution walls. Yeah, so I would say that um, um, at least as for my work, you know, the um, first what was important was the, um, the implementation of the uh, so-called institutional critique to the museum work. So uh, I often say I learned in the 90s from the artists and blah, blah. And there is, um, you know, I, I, I think I, I followed a lot, at least this uh, local, um, uh, local um, art artistic institutional uh, critiques and try to, um, uh, to, to, to integrate artistic experience uh, also into into institutions. So um, here already we can talk about this um, um, common production uh, of knowledge. You know, so it is an awareness that was present at the very beginning that um, we can't talk in the museum anymore only about the expert knowledge production. So there was already in the 90s let's say the third element <laughs> present, not only uh, me and experts and, uh, you know, uh, uh, the big world of uh, art uh, system, but there were always, um, so with the artists and, you know, then of course, um, there is a long history since, since then, but I would mention here maybe uh, two projects. Um, related explicitly to, to this education uh, program that we, the, uh, my colleagues, curators in Moderna Galleria realized. The first one was a summer school um, in, we had um, through two years um, related to the, um, to the exhibition on the Eastern European avant-garde and to artists 2000 plus collection. So we wanted somehow uh, to discuss, you know, the, and to make the, the collection more alive with, uh, through discussion and, you know, through um, information we would get from the, um, from the people attending the uh, summer school. So um, 
you know, it is often that I say that the heritage, the collection, uh, everything what museum does um, is a tool, uh, an active tool, and you have to activate it always with, uh, with, with the others, not only with the professionals. Uh, and the, um, the other project is the Glossary of Common Knowledge. Uh, where we um, wanted to create, it's still going on, of course, uh, in the frame of uh, Internationale, uh, the Museum Confederation, um, the European Museum Con Confederation. So the, the, I think the, the common denominator between all those um, educational, whatever project, uh, was the question of translation, you know, how you convey the knowledge and how you get the knowledge. So the translation between, you know, the expert artists, communities, and the, we know that the translation is always based on one um, language. So there is always, always one language uh, tool that we translate the things. With, uh, with the glossary of common knowledge, uh, we decided to translate you know, why are working together, why are discussing the terms in the frame of the seminars. So we have prepared more, I, I don't remember exactly the number, but um, probably more around 10 seminars related to different refer referential fields as geopolitics, subjectivity, um, you know, and then uh, around, the, um, around the referential fields, um, different narrators um, propose the terms that have been discussed in the, in the, in the seminars. And then we, or we produced that um, big uh, book, the glossary. And of course, uh, we continue uh, with, uh, with, with the seminars in May already. It's good to have moments of continuation. I think that these days is always important to stress and I will just advertise it additionally. It's a really great book. So I also recommend people, there is a special website for Glossary of Common Knowledge where you can learn more about it. We have a couple of questions on all different platforms. So I will just start from kind of in the chronological order. So there is a question from Mariana Cvetkovic. Thank you, Zdenka. Can you tell us how you see the comrades in the frame of contemporary neoliberal cultural public institutions in our region? How can we penetrate their petrified structures with the notions and actions of solidarity and the needs to act together? So first of all, I think, you know, the comradeship today can't be exactly the same as um, in partisans, let's say, because there are in times of socialism, because, um, you know, as I, in my formula, formula uh, I explained what, how I um, understand the comradeship. And um, so one of the important element of the comradeship is the common idea, you know, the common goal. So this, here we have a, a problem already, you know, because nowadays uh, we don't want to have, uh, um, you know, the common denominator. We don't want to reduce a variety of different ideas, practices only to one idea. So this is, this is something what differs um, uh, our times from, let's say, times of socialism or the, you know, liberation front or whatever. So how to, how to deal with it? How, wh what can replace the, the, this uh, idea, a big idea that one would die for. Uh, so we can see, um, especially in, in times of, uh, in time of pandemic, um, uh, we talk about care and solidarity more than ever before. So I would say, you know, that the ethic, the ethic of, um, ethics of care and solidarity somehow replaced politics, um, uh, politics based on, um, on one idea or, you know, one ideology, um, something like that. And I, I think this is very important. 
So how I see it uh, um, in the institutions, uh, especially in our region, I can of course talk about my own experience uh, working in Moderna Galleria until recently. Uh, so together with the, with the, uh, with the colleagues um, from other uh, museums of uh, Internationale, uh, we uh, coined the term the constituent museum. There is also a book published by Internationale about it. So each of our museum, I would say, explains it a little bit slightly different, but there is, uh, uh, there is an idea of uh, horizontality, you know, an idea that goes beyond this uh, expert um, work um, of sharing, of solidarity, of um, you know, people, uh, the communities, activists, um, intellectual artists. For them, we create um, um, new models of work. I think it's very important, not only that we in the museum, that we build the new ideas about comradeship or solidarity or whatever, but we really have to change uh, the modes of our work, you know, the protocols of, in the institution. So this is very important and this is a more difficult part of uh, the world. So how to do it? So in Internationale and also in Moderna Galleria, we tried uh, different things. For example, I don't know, in Moderna Galleria, in the Museum of uh, Contemporary Art, Metelkova, there is a bar that is unfortunately closed at the mo moment because of uh, we know. And the bar, um, we trusted their bar to the refugees uh, to, to run it. And it worked well, you know. So there are activities uh, uh, that you, you know, and then or, of course, in recent months, um, you mentioned before also, uh, rock, uh, Metelkova Shes, uh, six were people, the activists and NGOs uh, were evicted. And um, so it is um, important also how you, uh, as an institution, are uh, comrade. So we, of course, we supported um, uh, the colleagues, the activists, the artists, um, uh, with the public uh, letter uh, that was published on our website. We also wanted to give a space to the, for example, to the Peace Institute, one of the NGOs in Metelkova uh, 6. We want to give them the space for their uh, exhibition this year. Uh, but then the acting director, you know, we just came from the acting to the full mandate director last week. So the acting director uh, in last three months. Um, so he, he declined, he didn't uh, approve uh, the exhibition of the, the very small exhibition of the, of the Peace Institute, which wouldn't be, you know, I can't imagine before this wouldn't be possible, you know to give a small space in the institution um, to such important um, NGO as the, uh, from the 90s on. So, you know, uh, but what we can do, um, it's, uh, we can talk about it and we can raise the awareness about the situation and how difficult it is to sustain the comradeship today. Well, we have quite a few uh, questions also in Zoom platform. So Nicoletta is asking, uh, thank you for hosting this talk. Uh, everywhere around Europe, we can acknowledge new alt-right movements that are coming back into the politics and public opinion. The new rise of right out voices in Romania can be identified also in relation uh, with the Orthodox Church. For example, some uh, protests and petitions uh, against abortion came from this segment of population. Uh, did the Catholic Church and rise of the police authority also influence the, right, uh, the rise of the new right out movements in our part of the Europe? So in Slovenia, I would say, you know, that the church, of course, it's, it's uh, whenever you have the right wing, uh, 
uh, government, uh, that is the church. <laughs> you can't uh, avoid this uh, uh, alliance. So it is, um, of course, um, uh, like that, but it's not so, so difficult um, as in, obviously, in Romania or in Poland, you know, the situation in Poland in terms of the Catholic Church is the most um, severe. So they, we, we know the stories about abortion and we know um, about the protests. And I think um, that uh, it's very important to emphasize this feminist dimension of the, uh, of the protests um, in nowadays Eastern and Central Europe, Central uh, Europe, especially in Poland. I don't know uh, well the situation in Romania, but probably I'm sure that uh, women are um, are active there as well. Thank you, Stenka. We'll continue with questions. There is one from your Internationala comrade, Charles Eschet. Thanks, Denka. Can you talk about what you think about the category of East Europe or Balkans? What does it mean? Uh, art. So, sorry, East Europe or Balkans art. What does it mean today? It seems less discussed than years ago, yet it st still seems relevant to him to avoid flattening everything under the global art stamp. Okay, thank you, Charles. Um, I, I, I think um, it's still important somehow uh, to use um, the terms, although uh, it would be better to use the term, you know, the art from um, Eastern Europe or art from Yugoslavia, heroic voices from ex-Yugoslavia. Uh, as soon as you say, of course, um, Eastern European or whatever, uh, you you define more um, you identify the art with a specific um, context, which I think it's not completely wrong. As some colleagues of mine would say, you know that uh, a lot of um, colleagues think that there is no uh, need anymore to talk about the regional. Uh, uh, or whatever art, but I think, um, you know, that um, it is very important to, to relate, to think your region, at, but always parallelly, you need to be critical about um, commodification of the region. We, in the last 20 years, we witnessed a lot of projects, especially Balkan projects, um, uh, some of them that uh, commodified the region, that exoticized the region. So, um, you know, I was, when I was invited to make an exhibition in Rome, uh, I was aware about the danger. Uh, it's somehow difficult also because, you know, when you are invited to the Western institution, the Western institution always has uh, its expectations and the expectations are normally not the same as uh, your intentions are, you know. So for me, it was first. It was important to um, to talk about the, the urgencies of the regions that are not only the urgencies um, of our localities, but the urgencies that we share with other localities. And those urgencies together are in resonance. And I think the resonance is one of very important um, a concept that we don't talk probably enough. You know, the resonance is um, um, something that is uh, important to think um, in terms of our future. Only through resonances when different voices from different regions with their own, you know, local experience come together, um, only then we can move uh, somewhere, you know, only then we can um, point to the broader picture, to the, to the global problems. You know, the, the local problems and epidemics, you know, the epidemic somehow uh, turned uh, our attention to locality. And, you know, there are, of course, there are more and more projects and we have to take care about our neighbors, about this and that, which is near to us. 
physically. But at the same time, you know, um, um, this new new local. That, that's why I prefer to talk about um, you know situated um, um, situatedness, which is broader. It it it, it also includes um, relationality that we are not here. Uh, uh, isolated in our localities, you know, because this new situation has also this dark side. It brings also the nationalism, the provincialism, all these things. So the resonance, uh, the resonances are extremely important. So it is about, um, you know, the situated voices that can resonate with uh, the other voices and they can uh, share the problems that are present uh, also elsewhere, not only in our uh, localities. So I don't know. So on, uh, Charles asked about the Eastern European art. Uh, of course, I, I was I was talking about this Eastern Europeanness, what it is, you know. So um, obviously, somehow the history is repeating the history. Uh, of uh, authoritarianism that through the history of Eastern European, European countries were present and were different than uh, other uh, authoritarianism. So it is important to think this difference and why, why it, and how it is repeating differently than in America or somewhere else. So these are these regional local aspects that are <laughs> absolutely important we need to think about them you know it is not a, 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 it is eastern european art or whatever relates to eastern europe it's it's not about and for uh, identity or any of those kind of questions and for me also identity questions uh, were not also before were not so important for me what was important in the past in the uh, 90s or the, the early 2000s um, was more about the uh, similar material condition than the identity questions. You know, the questions of infrastructure, um, the um, lack of histories, lack of institutions, work, you know, so these are the things um, that somehow we have been sharing. Uh, and if you, you define this as uh, Eastern Europe, Eastern European, what, that's fine. Okay. We have a question from another comrades from Ileana Kukianaki, who says, thank you Zdenka for this wonderful presentation. Um, I have two questions. First one is more curatorial curiosity. I wanted to ask whether there was a linear timeline that also informed the exhibition, uh, exhibition spatial arrangement of the works. And then I will read the second after you answer this one? Mm, not, not really, but uh, uh, I, I would say yes a little because, you know, the exhibition um, is divided in these eight uh, sections and the first sections are about these uh, values um, like brotherhood, uh, freedom, equality, um, hope, which is a modernist, uh, socialist value, let's say. So in this, um, and you know, the other four values are actually not positive values, but are the results of the, of the capitalism. Um, yes, in these terms, we can find this uh, kind of a chronology of values, but not really the chronology in, t in terms how the artworks are organized in the exhibition, because most of the artworks are uh, contemporary recent. Um, so there is no this uh, linear, of course, um, 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 installation. But yeah, the, I think it's important to mention, yeah, that these, uh, let's say, um, first set of the values are installed uh, more together, you know, so uh, in terms uh, of uh, um, linearity, uh, also, we can we can say, yeah, uh, in a way, this is a linear way of thinking. And the second question, uh, to echo Sabina's question and uh, then Charles as well, 
and your response on the binary of global local and how do you feel that these new nationalisms that focus on local and national affect or reflect in the artistic and curatorial practices of those that live in Slo Slovenia, for example, Greece, Slovakia, Hungary. So how is that subject uh, matter being addressed and uh, whether you see that there is a significant response or reaction to that? I think that, um, you know, the topics uh, that I also have been discussing in my presentation on uh, the actual problems on the national and authoritarian uh, issues are not so um, present. Um, at the exhibitions because there are no there are no exhibitions at the moment actually you know so you know we are almost closed all the time so what I of course there are some exhibitions and uh, projects but I think that what is more important than the curatorial practices in this sense are the things that are happening in the streets at the moment you know these are direct um, reactions. Uh, to the actual problems, and you have really a lot of art there. And you see the protests are self-curated in a way. There is a dramaturgy, uh, you know, there is a perfect triton. Um, there is no division, you don't know who does what. So there is no obvious um, division of the role. Uh, but there is a lot of art. Um, and you know, I showed a little, you know, the, the bicycles and the, I think the design, the logos uh, for the protest here, um, um, this is something uh, re really strong. And there are some actions um, um, happening every week and last week, uh, last year, um, almost every, uh, Tuesday in the, run, in the course of some months, there were um, um, performances, artistic performances in front of the cultural ministry. You know, so, and it's not only in Slovenia, you can find in, in um, everywhere. So the artists uh, and activists in Moscow uh, or other Russian or Belarus um, cities or in Poland, um, Everywhere the art um, uh, became part of um, important part of the of the protest, and I think that the protest we 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 complain. Oh, you know, we don't have uh, big art events now because everything is closed. The museums, the concert halls, theater, but we have we have big events in the streets. You just open the window, and then you see incredible art cultural events. And this is new. I think that we have to start looking with the, with the new eyes. Um, we, 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 can learn, uh, we can learn a lot from the last year and what is going on now mm -hmm. and how art react to it. Normally, and um, you know, we, we, we normally don't hear about those events as the art event or you know, what we see in the street. Uh, as the art, uh, but uh, who knows, you know, I, I am sure that this will influence our curatorial and institutional work uh, seriously in the future. I think you've partly answered already. We have a question from Natalie. Um, do you think it's possible to practice? It, 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 do you think it's possible to practice, let's say, institutional critique when institutions are themselves not very productive and or influential, or becoming less relevant with the kind of art they display? Speaking of contemporary art museums, I guess this shift that you were talking about in the streets um, is somehow going into this direction. I don't know. Is there anything you would like to add to this? I, mean, I can only add that the institutional critique somehow um, has to be Mm, uh, critic, more critically observed today. You know, maybe we, we need to think about something else than institutional critique, but because, you know, what can you, how can you 
uh, think with the, with the tools of institutional critique when you are in the streets and you know you see all the things uh, going on. So what is uh, what is at stake at the moment is the change. You know the change. The critique is still the concept. You know you you still try to describe the reality. But what is going on now is the actual thing. Yeah, I think this is a very important thing what you mentioned now, because I think we are quite struggling, all of us in, in these institutional frameworks, how do we apply something that is really happening now, and also with all the institutional ways, which are in fact so ossified, that somehow it's not easy to link them to this change that is happening now. I, I very much agree with this, what you said. We quite have quite a few more questions, so I will move on. Uh, another dear colleague, Tevj Logar, uh, says, Denka Hvala, first of all. And then he asks, uh, how do you see the relation between Missiano's institu uh, institutionalization of the friendship and your formula of co comradeship? Taking into consideration the time span from 90s till now, and also how the system of contemporary art developed various informal networks through new technological means. Mm, thank you, Teus. Of course, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of um, uh, continuation, I think, that what Missiano was uh, writing was also important for us. And, uh, you know, of course, the friendship um, is very near to the concept of uh, comradeship. I would only, you know, because I also mentioned the friendship as, a, as, as, a, as a one of the conditions uh, when you define what the uh, comradeship uh, is. Uh, but, you know, I think that um, maybe there is a slight difference and I would say again, you know, with the comradeship, there is more structure maybe, there is, there is, um, there is a plan, you know, there is agenda, which is not always uh, necessary with the friendship. Sometimes even a strict one, we can say, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Zdenka, uh, I hope you still have a stamina because we have many questions uh, in, in Zoom platform. So Darko Fritz uh, asks, uh, do you find the relation of periphery and center still interesting in the frame of the Central Eastern Europe discourses? Or it, is it particular states or regions? Can we find its new readings with decolonization discourses? Um, of course, um, I think that, that uh, it, it, you know, the relation uh, between uh, central periphery changed, but um, uh, I think that we, we, we can't say that it doesn't exist anymore. This would be really uh, wrong. <clears throat> I would say that, um, you know, it, it is, you know, the, the idea that, that the, this relation seriously change actually became uh, an important instrument for the existing, still existing centers, you know. So if you see the art world today, you can still see the main institutions, um, the museums, in New York, Paris, London, as uh, we have before decades. And we see uh, that the institutions are still uh, dominant, you know, that they um, are still powerful and that they sustain their power also thanks to their new politics that goes beyond the vision between center and periphery. It means that their, um, their new, relatively new um, orientation is um, geographical diversity. So in their collections, in their programs, we can recognize, um, you know, the inclusion of the artists uh, from different regions, the ideas, uh, different um, uh, efforts also to translate their context and everything. But most of those uh, projects um, 
are there um, still to to um, you know to sustain their uh, position and to also it 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 is going like that thanks to their own um, relation uh, to, thanks to the their relation to their own uh, localities or their own geography which normally and most often doesn't exist so for example moma would never talk, talk about its own you know uh, geography or um, geopolitics ideology in the way as uh, it talks about other localities so it there is still a kind of empty center you know, I mean, there are many changes and I wouldn't say that all their efforts are, uh, that all their efforts deserve the critiques, just opposite. I think they did a lot also, MoMA contributed a lot and, you know, they did this exhibition on the Yugoslav architecture, which influenced positively on uh, some uh, cases in the, in our region where the, important modernist architectures, buildings were neglected and so on. So sometimes this, this kind of efforts uh, have um, um, important um, uh, positive effects. But in a, in a bigger picture, it, I think that the things um, haven't uh, changed a lot. So this is also in a way, a new kind of uh, colonialism, you know, if, if you ask me how these these this things are related, so I think that the colonial um, um, philosophies concept in the museums, in the Western museums today, are of similar nature as this divide between a center and periphery. You know, as you try to to negate the existence of something that was so important before, that is, you, one should be suspicious because it's only a new, you know, then it means that the new model of dominancy is already there. Your I cat seems to agree, Denka. <laughs> Uh, you've been really generous with answers, so we will just try to wrap it up. We have um, two more questions and we, and we stop with that, but I will also just uh, kind of um, forward to you. Uh, greetings from Vit Havranek and Anthony Gardner and uh, saying thank you for, for your lecture. But we still have two more questions uh, before we end. So one is from... Um, also, dear colleague Theo uh, Prodromidis, he says, thank you, Anna, for the question on education and Zdenka for presentation. As cultural and art institutions are increasingly co-opted by the hard state and its private friends, and whereas many of the parallel programs seem to incorporate struggles for education, care, solidarity, the course of the institutions are instrumentalized to serve government and governmental agendas. I would uh, like thus to ask, how can we imagine to integrate critique in learning and learning in critique inside the core of the institution and not only in its parallel programs? Well, this is a um, um, difficult question actually, how to answer it, you know, it's, um, I don't know, I, I don't agree that, uh, the, in the in in the in the institutions museums uh, that we can define as critical, the critique is present only in the in the parallel program. You know, it's it, it's something that I I don't see like that. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's um, you know in Internationale, for example, where I think mostly we can talk about um, the critical museums. Um, you know the the critique is present in the in the in the core ideas and the programs of the institutions. Okay, and the last 
Yeah, I was just thinking, Anna, maybe just before we move to the last question, there is a little follow-up question from Iliana on what uh, uh, Zdenka was answering Darko around center and periphery. But so just to, to maybe read that briefly. I agree very much with Zdenka, Iliana says, but does it, uh, does it not seem we cannot escape the periphery center mainly because even if the museum, as you said, geographically diversifies, its collection by including artists that come from the other regions, many of these artists have already moved and work in these centers in order to be visible. Uh, so sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the visibility is uh, also one uh, important uh, um, topic. Um, so it is, um, you know, uh, the new agenda, relatively new agenda of the central institution is to give visibility to the art that didn't have it before. So we can see it as a positive gesture. And at the same time, you know, there are also artists from the periphery that, uh, that want to, to, to have more visibility, you know, to, to gain some um, nego better negotiation a negotiated position or better success in the art market. Um, so the question is actually, uh, what would be the alternative? You know, how can we avoid this question of visibility? Because the visibility is one of the main tool of the art system that everybody wants from different reasons, from positive, negative reasons, whatever, you know, we can't judge uh, all this. You can't criticize artists who want to have a success and to be visible. But we, I, I think what we can think is uh, the alternative. You, you, you have also artists, um, you know, Anthony Gardner, <laughs> I don't know if he's still there. Uh, he was, um, write, writing about the aesthetic of withdrawal, you know, so what, what, what uh, or you have artists like uh, Brenner, Alexander Brenner, you know, who by his purpose, he doesn't want to have this kind of uh, visibility. Although, okay, when he did an action, when he does an action, whatever, uh, he gains the visibility immediately of different sort. But still, you know, is it, um, um, what makes us powerful, you know, what makes us um, more equal um, contributor uh, to the um, exchange of idea in international space? Uh, if we are more visible or if we also um, function with the ideas and positions which are, which are opaque? You know, which are because whatever becomes visible, it becomes um, a commodity. I mean, there, there is this danger. Uh, so I think that a very important tool is also uh, to hide or to 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 make part of your activities invisible, unmarked. I think this is important strat strategy. And this is a strategy, unfortunately, which we need at the moment also. You know, if this situation in Europe uh, with new authoritarianism is becoming uh, more severe, we have to learn other strat strategies also. And uh, visibility is not always uh, the best one. Beautiful. We need to stay faithful also to the heritage of our avant-garde. So I see that uh, not to uh, non-visibility also related to numerous uh, new avant-garde practices from Eastern Europe and beyond. And the last question, it has to do with this uh, long debate of uh, Soros role uh, related to Eastern European art and politics. So Hannah asks, do you think that Soros realism is still dominant form of cultural representation of Balkan artists today? Uh, she explains uh, Soros realism is formulated as new media plus local team plus global viewpoint equals Balkan artwork. Interesting. 
<laughs> I don't know. You know, in Slovenia, um, we haven't experienced uh, this um, so, uh, Soros realism <laughs> so strongly. Uh, it didn't have such a, let's say, such an important role as maybe in other Eastern European countries uh, where we didn't have um, um, institutions uh, on the level that we had uh, here in the former Yugoslavia. So in some of the countries, Soros uh, centers uh, were really uh, important and uh, they probably um, they left behind uh, in uh, important archives. I think, uh, you know, some of the archives were first built in that uh, uh, Soros uh, centers, but uh, about, uh, I can't tell much about this Soros realism, this formula, um, because we- will have to still do another whole new panel about it because yeah. this still stays really the topic in the region somehow. And I mean, both in the, the field of the art world, but also it's also interesting in, in, in which way it's also, you know, we are now heading to local elections and so on. And you can still be sort of missionary or whatever and have a finger pointed at you and so on, even outside culture. So we'll kind of uh, have to de debate this on the side. Before we completely finish, Zenka, and thank you, I still want to read just a few warm greetings from dear colleagues from uh, Norway, Anne Sver Carlsen from Zagreb, from Tomislav Gotovac Institute, Jelena Vesic from Belgrade. So you really had a wide circle uh, of support. I also want to say that if some anybody missed something or wants to recommend the talk to, to any uh, anyone, there will be a recording on VHV Academia uh, website. And also uh, we will continue with the evenings of VHV Academia. Next week, we are also announcing a new generation. Uh, of course, we had to adopt to the circumstances, but within that, we'll also uh, talk a little bit more about some new formats, uh, mentors, participants, and we are also looking forward to having you uh, with us in the in the next week to uh, weeks too. And thank you uh, very much, Zenka, for for joining us. Thank you. It was a pleasure, and thank you very much uh, for all of your questions. Um, yeah, I'm really happy. So many friends uh, were here listening. Thank you for your time. And for the end, uh, I would like to read uh, a passage from uh, Zdenka's text, my post-catastrophic glossary, quite useful one these days. The text that concludes a beautiful book that I encourage you to read. We mentioned the book so many times this evening, Comradeship, Curating Art and Politics by Zdenka. So the passage, no museums, no careers, no documenta, no Venice, no competition over prestige, no funding, no government just a bloody fight for survival with no hypocrisy or masquerades. Our museums are gone and we don't meet as often since we cannot travel by plane. But our friendship has grown stronger, cynical reason having lost its purchase. There is now even greater idealism among us. The sense of solidarity and shared humanity once left in the dustbin of the history are in the new light of aftermath being revived and redefined. I think we will survive this disaster. My friends are alive and I can hardly wait to see them roar like a young lions, to sit down with them again in some ruin and start planning a renewed world. With this end, <laughs> with this word, we are uh, ending for this evening. Thank you everyone and uh, see you soon.